But let's move on. Okay, so let's look at all. So all returns true if all elements of the list match the predicate. False if there are any that don't. So it's logical and, right? Like you have a list of things and then you're saying, if all of the things return true in regards to this particular function or this particular predicate, right? Like we, we run each of the individual elements through a predicate, through a function, and, and this, this predicate, this function returns true or false. And if all of them are true, logical and, 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 then the final value is true. If any of them are false, then I mean, it's false, right? So, so essentially, it's just, I mean, we're talking about a contrived way of, of saying true and, and true, or I mean, we, we should say maybe x and, and y and, and z and, and, and so forth and so forth, right? Uh, but perhaps more accurately, what we should say, I mean, what we're saying is uh, we run through a predicate, right? So we have a predicate, which is f, and then we have a list. So let's call that r. So we take the first, um, we, we do logical and with f applied to the first argument and then f, uh, f applied to uh, the second, sorry, I said argument, but I meant element in the list. And then logical and on uh, the, the next one and, and, and so forth and so forth, right? So if r here is, let's say 10, 20, 30, for example. Uh, and then f is, let's say, when given an x, does x equal 10, for example. Right, so, so then the first one here, right, this one would actually return true because at index zero, we have the number 10, but then the other ones would return false. So here we'd get true and and false and and false, which would of course yield false, right, because logical and. But um, th this is sort of hard coding, uh, but the way we can do it when we use Ramda here is that we can say r dot all. Uh, given this f function that I want to use, and then given this list that I have, that's called r. And then let's console log this to see what this gives. So you can see, yeah, we get false. And let's change this. Let's say if it's bigger or equal than 10, greater or equal than 10, then suddenly we get true, right? Because all of them actually are. And if we change that to 11, we're back to false. And it, you can see here that I did I wrote my own equals equals function here, but you can also make use of Ramdas r dot equals, right? So you can say uh, instead of defining this function, right, we could say r dot equals ten, right? That's the th same thing. Now we get false, of course, because not all of them equal ten. But let's say that all of them actually equal ten, and then we get true. And you have more of these. You have less than, greater than. Uh, stuff like that. We also have those as functions, but we'll look at that later. But yeah, that's that's the essence of this all function. And then we have some other stuff here where it's like, okay, dispatches to the all method of the second argument is if present and acts as a transducer if a transformer is given in, in list position. Now, I have to be honest here. I mean, I, I'm trying to understand transducers, but that's totally in, in process. That's something I have in process, I should say. I mean, it, it's stupid if I try to explain that for you because I don't actually fully understand it yet. So I'm, I'm going to skip uh, the sort of transducers, functors, and all of this stuff. And if you find that interesting, let me know, and then I'll try to make specific videos on that, uh, potentially in relation to Ramda. But for now, we'll just skip them and get the, and instead go for the sort of quick getting started guide with, with Ramda so that you can at least use all of the functions to perform actually very useful tasks. But okay, let's move on. So that's all. Now, let's, let's look at all pass. Okay, what's the difference here? Well, it says, takes a list of predicates and returns a predicate that returns true for a given list of arguments arguments if every one of the provided predicates is satisfied by those arguments. Okay, so the function is return or the function returned is a curried function whose arity matches that of the highest arity predicate. Let, let's skip this portion and let's just think about this portion. So what they're saying essentially is that if you have multiple tests that you want to do, right? So so let's let's go back to our example. Like we had uh, r equals 10. But then we said, okay, maybe r equals 10 is not good. Let's say we wanted to do, uh, actually, let, let me look at greater or equal than. I think it's, yeah, GTE here. R dot GTE is essentially greater or equal than. And let's just see, two is greater than one, right? So this is the argument that's supposed to be greater. Uh, let's go back, where were we? Equal, uh, all pass is where we were at. So let, let me switch this function here for greater than or equal GTE, right? Yeah, then we get true, but if we say greater or equal than 11, then we still get true. 
Yeah, sorry, so I, I misunderstood the order here. Let's let's check this out again. GTE greater than or equal. Hmm, wait a minute. Console log, if we do r.gte 1020, that's false. But if we flip the order 2010, then that's true, right? So this is the greater number. Now, why doesn't that work when we partially apply it here? Because if we say greater than or equal to 9, ah, oh, no. No, wait, of course. I mean, sorry, I'm just being extremely silly. I don't know why I get so confused sometimes. So this, this just works. So this works perfectly. I mean, if we pass 12 here, we get true, right? But if we pass and if we pass 10 we get true but if we pass 9 here we get false as it should be I don't know why I was so confused right so we're saying is 9 greater than all of the items in this collection not the other way around right we're not saying are all the items greater than 9 then we have to use this r dot uh, underscore underscore thing to, to, to try to flip the order but now we're saying is at nine greater than so so let's actually I mean let's let's use the r dot underscore here so then we would say and if we put nine here then we're saying are all of the items greater than nine right the reason I did this let, let's go back so we were at uh, all pass all pass okay here we can say takes a list of predicates and returns a predicate that returns true for the given list of arguments. So, so let's look at what they have here. So they have two predicates, two functions that given some value return a boolean that represent whether the predicate is true or not. So they do prop equals, we'll, we'll look at that later, but essentially prop equals extracts a property from a given object under this key and asks whether, it, whether it's equal to this value. But uh, what we wanna do is we wanna do greater than uh, nine. So actually let's save these. Greater than nine is r.gte r underscore nine. I mean, I would not do this if I was actually writing a program, but um, we're, doing it, we're doing it now sort of for, for uh, explicit now, so <laughs> to make it more readable. Let, let's say greater than nine, and let's say we also wanna do less than 20. So let me actually name this 09 so that they line up. And then we do less than or equal, I'll just assume this is in the same order, so we'll do underscore underscore, and then we'll say 20. So those are my two predicates, right? I want to run both of them. The point is that I want to ask whether all items in this list both satisfy greater than 9 and less than 20. And instead of sort of chaining and doing or, or running these through a pipe and, and somehow figuring out these things, actually that would be a bit tricky, what we can do is that we can take these two predicates and construct a new predicate given these two predicates where this new predicate checks both of these things. And that's, and that's all pass. So what we do is we essentially say uh, r dot all pass and then we pass a list let me actually space this to make it clear containing both of these things so greater than 09 and less than 20 let me close that list and then we pass the next argument and our argument is is the array that that we're going to run it with so compare it here right here we were passing a single uh, predicate but now we are passing a list of predicates so let's look at that hmm Ah, sorry, of course. So all pass produces a predicate. So sorry, I was thinking about this incorrectly. So so maybe hmm, let's let's check this out. Maybe the question maybe the thing is that we have to apply it like this. Let's just see whether that's the case. Yeah, so sometimes I assume th this is a bit of a tangent, but I assume this has to do with the dynamic nature of JavaScript and the fact that the creators of Ramda or the contributors to Ramda have decided to maintain uh, what's that called? The idea of functions that are variadic. Uh, so, so remember we said ternary is taking uh, three arguments and unary is taking one argument and all that stuff. But if you have something which is variadic, that means it can take any number of arguments. So if you're familiar with a spread operator from JavaScript, for example, I mean, you can capture the arguments i mean you haven't you haven't you, you have the keyword arguments and when you're in a function that extracts the arguments that were passed to that function regardless how many they were and regardless of how many arguments the function defined that it will accept so i mean if you have I mean, if you think about it that way if you have a, a function that accepts uh, uh an x actually let's say an x and a y and then just adds adds them up i mean uh, or sorry i forgot to name this <laughs> 
as, let's call that add. I mean, you can, it's completely valid to call add with like a bazillion numbers, probably not a bazillion, but uh, you get my point. I mean, that, that's that's completely valid. And what we could do in this function is that we could capture any other arguments that, that were passed. So so my, my, my subjective understanding of why some things are a bit odd in, in or, or I shouldn't say odd, sorry, it's probably completely reasonable, but from the programmer's perspective, from my perspective, sometimes they're a bit uh, surprising. I would assume that has to do with respecting uh, variadic functions. Anyways, here we can't continue this uh, in terms of the sort of currying. I mean, the whole thing is not curried, right? It, it returns a predicate to which we can pass this array, but we can't pass it in sort of this curried fashion. We instead get a new function that we explicitly have to uh, have to pass the the value that we want to run through the predicate. And of course, you can see then that this works. We get false, but that's because actually, why is that? That's a bit odd. We shouldn't get false unless I'm I'm uh, constructing this predicate incorrectly, of course. So LTE. Uh, so let's actually let's let's flip this. I mean, if we say eight here. Oh, that's two false. Wait a minute. This makes no sense. Zero, that's false. A hundred, that's false. And nine, I mean, it's greater than nine. Did we do this correctly? Well, sorry, wait. Uh, now I'm. So let me do this. I'll just inline this so I can change it faster. And then we'll do that. Add a comma there. Then let's just look at that. Of course, it's the same thing. But I mean, if I say zero and a hundred here, and if I flip it, a hundred and zero. What the? No, I'm so confused. Greater than a hundred, of course, not greater than nine. False. Ah, 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 ah. I'm doing something incorrect. So let's go back to uh, all pass. So all pass. We construct a function. We we call all pass by passing it a list of predicates and that gives us a new function which here they call is queen of spades and then they invoke that with the object that they want to test so i mean let's do something more trivial here let's just say whether it equals 10 uh e sorry it's not called equal it's called equal equals yeah equals that's false okay so i'm definitely messing something up here Okay, I just realized what was going on. And, and I gotta say, I mean, sometimes I'm amazed by my own stupidity. So the problem here is, of course, that if we look at all pass, uh, yes, it accepts an array of predicates, but then it doesn't accept an array of things that you should uh, test or, or, or things that you want to test whether they match the, the predicates. You pass a, th a single thing of the of the thing uh, of the type where you have that you've constructed predicates for so, <laughs> so i mean if we want to do what we're doing here we need map right we're not talking about an array we're talking about or let me put it this way we're not talking about matching multiple predicates with multiple candidates or multiple values what we're talking about is matching multiple predicates uh, with a single value if you want to do multiple predicates over multiple values then we need a map and we could trivially do that but but i mean let, 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 let's let's just start by by saying if uh, 10 here is okay right then of course we get true I mean it's not any more complicated than that uh, we still however of course have to do we can't do this uh, again I'm not entirely sure why but I'm sure there are somewhat logical reasons for that we have to invoke it by by actually uh, closing this to, to sort of return this this predicate function and then uh, and then we uh, run it by passing the, the value that we want to test so uh, yeah now back to if, if we have multiple things right Let, like let's say let's go back to the scenario where we had greater or equal then and then we didn't want to uh, we don't know the first value but we do know the second value and that's let's say 10 so we say greater or equal than 10 but less or equal than same thing here r dot underscore underscore and then let's say 20 this, uh, sorry, now I'm accidentally again passing the array. That's not what we want, we want to pass 10, okay? So for 10, that's true. Clearly, however, if we change to nine, that's false because now it's outside the range. We're saying greater than 10, but, but smaller, lower than 20. 
and if we go to 21 that's also false but if we go to 20 that's true so now it's actually working the way we were expecting and if we wanted to make use of this array here if we wanted to check all of them I mean what we would have to do yeah I mean now we're getting way ahead of ourselves but that would be like we would have to do a map where we do uh, an all uh, where we make use of this predicate so let's say all pass uh, and then we would pass this array we actually use this line break and then we're closing this we're closing so we're closing the array we're closing this parenthesis we're closing this parenthesis and then we have a comma and we pass the array and then we close the final parenthesis did I get this right parenthesis parenthesis let's try this out yeah and no wait a minute then we get an array so let's look at all we say do all the values in this array adhere to this particular predicate so we construct the predicate here right all no all pass here we construct the predicate oh sorry so so my mistake of course we don't need to map that's that's silly then we're doing the same thing multiple times <laughs> sorry so we we just pass the r here and then we get true right uh and if we now make so you can mix in other words you can mix all pass and all and if we change one of these to 30, we now get false. And if we change them to 21, we get false. But 20, uh, that's fine. Cool. So so we, so we can mix, the, mix these two things, all pass and all. Sorry about mixing in map. That was a confusion from my part. And then if you, you, if you check out this C also, you can see that there's all pass and that's logical and, but there's also any pass and that's logical or. So then we would say, is it less than uh, less than or equal to uh, 20 or is it greater or equal to 10 and, and if any of those are true then we get true for that particular item and when running that through all then uh, we, we get whether all of the items satisfy either one of the criteria or the other criteria and not as in x or not as in exclusive or but in uh, as in simple or all right <laughs> actually let me just mention also that i i realized that this this thing that we mentioned about th th that we can't pass uh, first the list of predicates and and then the thing that we want to we want to check that's actually um, probably visible here in the type signature as well and that's probably this parenthesis but uh, beyond that I just realized also that uh, I mean I, I was confused about why it's called all pass if we're not actually passing a number of items but only a single item but here it says a predicate that returns true for a given list of arguments if every one of the provided predicates is satisfied by those arguments. So maybe we're just passing it wrong. Maybe we're not supposed to pass a list. Maybe we're just supposed to pass uh, a uh, or them as arguments. So, so let's see, I mean, if we do all pass, then we get the function and then we pass 20, 10, 10. What about this, right? That's true, but if we put 30 here in the end, Ah, so that's not actually the thing. The thing is that, so, so this is a bit intricate, sorry about realizing this later. The point is that we pass multiple arguments here, and that makes sense if our predicates take multiple arguments. So maybe, uh, I mean, now we could use, for example, let's say, actually, let, let's do this, let's try this out. Uh, less than, let's, let's only do less than, right? Less than or equal, and then we pass 20 and 10. That's false, and then let's flip this, 10 and 20. And that's true, right? So now we're passing both of the arguments. So two less than or equal, we're saying, is 10 less or equal than 20? So, so because LTE is taking two arguments, then we can pass two arguments down here. So, and, and that's what they mean when they say, uh, if every one of the provided predicates is sa satisfied by those arguments, or given a list of arguments, essentially. And of course, then we could we could do we could add multiple predicates here again. So we could say greater or equal than. But clearly, I mean these are these are exclusive. So this is impossible to satisfy. So even if we flip the arguments now, I mean it doesn't make any sense. We still get false. So of course, not impossible actually. We could say twenty and twenty, and this should be true because then we're satisfying satisfying because then we're satisfying both of the criteria. And as you can see, this works because we get true. Um, but of course, I mean clearly we could also do we could flip this probably and uh, we haven't looked at that but I think there's a flip function here yeah so we could also say r dot flip on this to to invert the order of the arguments this is still true if they're the same but now if we say 10 here that's false but if we flip them and say 10 and 20 
then that's true, but we've also essentially made greater or equal than behave like less than or, or equal. So uh, essentially, this is the same thing as saying this twice, which is then essentially the same thing as just saying this. But now it's, this is getting way out of hand, so, so, so let's move onwards. Let's, let, let's just remove this stuff. We've looked at, oh sorry, that was not flip, but all pass, right? We were at all pass, let's move forward. Then we have always, okay. What is always? 